I can't remember which record it is. I don't, I don't know. Who the hell knows? This is great television. Uh, man, I don't know. Um... Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze, where we bring you the latest in independent films and film festivals that are happening uh, around the world. And we are going to be kicking off our coverage of this year's Sound Unseen Film Festival. And we have William Saunders here today for his film, Dead Guy, Killing Music. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Right on. Thanks for coming on the show. And uh, tell us a little bit about Dead Guy, Killing Music. Uh, Dead Guy Killing Music is an authorized documentary about the short-lived and chaotic career of New Jersey's most dangerous band, Dead Guy. They, uh, they were a mid-90s hardcore metal, some people now call it a metalcore band, um, that had a very short-lived career and one notorious split in the band after an equally notorious record that they recorded, Fixation right. on a Coworker. Right on. How did you get involved with this subject matter? Have you uh, been with the band and toured with them, like in Jersey? Have you been to a lot of their shows, or how did that come about? Uh, no, I'm actually from Michigan, and okay. I never got to see, originally, I live in Brooklyn, New York now, but uh, I never got to see them. I only heard, you know, I only had their records from, from buying them. Um, the documentary came about, I had, I work in television. I'm a producer and editor. And uh, Dave and I had, the drummer Dave Rosenberg had, and I had come together on a project and uh, about three or four days into the project, I was like, hey man, I'm like nobody's, nobody knows how that guy ended. You know, there was no Twitter, there was no Facebook, you know, information didn't travel nearly as quickly as it does now and back in 1996. Um, <laughs> and he said, yeah, sure. You know, he, he's like, does anybody care? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, people care, definitely, you know. Um, so I came back to New York. That was in Amsterdam. We had that shoot. Came back to New York, uh, wrote him an outline, sent it back. And he said, looks good. You know, here's some contacts of some people you should talk to. And uh, just kind of hit the ground running and started started doing interviews. Uh, started interviewing in the end, uh, the fall of 2019 was the, the first interview. Wow. So it's been in the works for about two years now. And that now that it's coming to fruition, what uh, what pieces did you have to put into this doc? You interviewed obviously all of the band members, or did you get all of the band members and talk to like the venues where they played, or what uh, archival footage did you use uh, for the doc? We did talk to the band, all five of them, six of them technically, um, seven of them technically. There's a couple of different lineups, but we did get everybody who's ever been in Dead Guy was in the documentary, uh, and then we just kind of. Uh, like I said, we started shooting in 2019, obviously the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020, the whole world changed. So we ended up switching gears to Zoom interviews, which um, ended up being really effective in filling out the story. Um, I was able to just kind of email people out of the blue and say, hey, do you want, I heard you like Dead Guy, would you like to interview for the documentary? And they would be like, yeah, I'm literally doing nothing. How about Tuesday? You know, I'd be like, all right. So we filled it out with kind of as many people as we could find. And as we would interview people, they would also say, you need to talk to this guy. You need to talk to this guy. So we would just track them down. And again, everybody was sitting at home through the spring and summer of 2020. So it was either like a hard yes, I'd love to talk about dead guy or a hard no, no thanks. So there was, you know, not a lot in between. Sure. Uh, and then we just, we ended up shooting, I think 33 Zoom interviews. Wow. Over the course of uh, about six months. Yeah, it was the documentary was originally going to be a 30 minute kind of time capsule of just fixation on a coworker, their most popular record. Um, but as we got into these interviews, the story really expanded. You know, one person would tell a story and then I would talk to somebody a couple of days later and they're like, oh, I have footage of that show that that person's talking about. 
So mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, awesome. So that, you know, then that became like a little chunk of the story. And then eventually it just filled, it, it all filled right out. It's a, it's a career spanning uh, documentary. Nice. So uh, when they were really rocking in their in their heyday, so to say, in the 90s, uh, there wasn't any, you know, Spotify or Amazon Music or anything like that. That was like Tower Records style. Um, so did they have like really good uh, CD sales and vinyl sales and things like that? And then that's how they started building their base and people went to their shows in person, stuff like that. Um, yeah, kind of. They, they started in, in the East Coast uh, hardcore scene. They're from New Brunswick, New Jersey, and they would play up and down the east coast and they really did get a a ground game of support but then uh they got signed to victory records which really ended up kind of propelling them into the mainstream i guess you know mainstream hardcore scene not the mainstream mainstream scene uh but that got them a lot of play on college radio and it really started to build them a lot of momentum um but then shortly after they were they had split in two and then shortly after they split into two bands, they broke up completely. So mm. the, the magic of fixation on a coworker was certainly recognized when it came out, but over the last 25 years since its release, it has gotten into every genre of heavy music as an influence without question. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show to talk about Dead Guy Killing Music, which is now going to be screening at the Sound Unseen Festival. Uh, as you can see in the back, it's got the good marketing for, for Dead Guy Killing Music. So definitely check it out. And in closing, is there anything that you'd like to say to the Sound Unseen Festival organization for the acceptance this year? Uh, no, just thanks to Jim and Rich. They were uh, super accommodating. I was I, They were so super nice. They were They've been watching this documentary and waiting for its release for a while so i appreciate their um efforts in in getting it into sound unseen it was a great festival and uh yeah i look forward to working with them in the future right on well thank you for coming in today and we hope our audience checks out dead guy killing music directed by william saunders uh and stay tuned for more interviews that are coming out from this year's festival of sound unseen thank you for joining us will and hope you have a good day great thanks 